Hey guys, uh, super super busy with a bunch of other stuff this week, so this is just going to have to be a quick one, but I think it's pretty interesting. This is my Commodore 64, and some of you over a certain age will remember this computer very fondly, and some of you, like myself, are probably still using them and playing with them. I haven't been able to do much with mine because I didn't want to be bothered to try to get the old discs to work. So, over the holidays, Addy picked me up this, which is a SD card reader that hooks directly up to the um, disk drive port on the back of the unit. Um, I'll be mounting this internally, so my install was a little bit more complicated, but it's working great. I've got uh, an SD card in there and I can throw any disk images I want. But more importantly, I can save um, programming work to disk now. So when I power cycle it, uh, this computer has no hard drive in it. Now I actually have a drive that I can save my basic files to. So one of the nice things about my setup with the Commodore 64 is I actually still have manuals and things for it and they're quite useful and it's kind of fun to sit here with a manual like a paper manual in program but one thing that's not cool about programming on a computer this old when you've been programming on modern systems for oh I don't even know 20 years more um, is the fact that the Commodore has a typewriter style keyboard meaning that things like there's a double quote above the two and an equal sign in the middle of the keyboard. And restore and return. And the cursor keys, if you want to go one direction, you press it. If you want to go the other direction, you shift press it. You know, these sort of things my hands still know how to do, but it does definitely slow down my workflow. So I've been thinking about a way to speed up the process of writing C64 BASIC programs. One of the things about the old BASICs is that the lines were numbered. So here we have, you know, line 50, line 60, line 70, line 80, etc. Um, with go to's and go subs and return and all that sort of stuff. And that's just not how we do things nowadays. So I wanted to see if there was a way that I could automate the process of doing line numbering and renumbering of lines. And it turns out that somebody has already solved this problem pretty well with a program called C64List, which is a command line utility for taking a text file and turning it into a tokenized uh, PRG file, which is the format that is used for storing basic programs onto the disk. One extra cool thing about this is not only does it automatically do renumbering of lines, it adds in functionalities of various directives that allow you to do things like label a section or go to a label instead of a literal number and all sorts of other things, inline assembler. Um, yeah, anyway, if you program on a C64 and you are not familiar with C64 list and you're interested in doing basic work, then it is definitely a tool worth learning about. You do have to go through that very, very carefully though, because it's actually quite a fully featured program. Let's put it that way. So a PRG file is a pretty cool thing to be able to make, but I don't want to have to copy them onto a SD card every single time I want to test my code. So the goal here is to actually get it into an emulator, and one of the most popular emulators is Vice. And you can't really directly load a PRG file unless you're opening up the emulator, switching it into a mode that treats your hard drive as sort of a giant disk image, and then manually loading it up. I want something much faster. 
And to do that, uh, Vice can load up a few formats very quickly and easily. And one of those formats is a D64 disk image. So basically what this command line utility does is take a PRG file and package it into a D64 disk image. And from there, Vice can open that up, and I tend to use X64, um, unless I'm doing something timing related, then you want to use the one that is for accurate timing. And uh, this thing has a excellent vSID, so I can work on basic that is manipulating the SID uh, register values, and this will emulate the output of the SID chip and that's the sound chip on the old Commodore and I'm mostly interested in the unit at this point for music production so that's basically why I'm building up this tool chain is so that I can get this program to make beeps and boops uh, so I basically know what's going to happen before I drop that code onto the real C64 and record the output there all right, so like I said, the, these utilities, all but the vice emulator, are uh, command line utilities. So you would have to type something like, that to actually get this to work. Um, instead of doing that every single time I want to test my latest change in the code, I thought I would make a tool to automate the chain of command line tools into a single button. So here I've got cpin64 tentative title. You could pronounce it spin64, and I may do that depending on how um, fancy I make this GUI front end. If I get it looking a lot like the propeller tool, then I will definitely personally call, probably call it Spin64. Um, but anyway, this isn't for release. This is a personal tool, uh, so I can call it whatever I want. Um, anyway, so the interface here is really simple. We just got a run, a file thing, and the sorts of things you'd see up here are minimal at best. So I've got a new file, I can pop a new tab, new, blah, 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 switch back to the other one. That all works. Um, loading, saving, tokenizing is uh, baking your basic program that you've written out into a PRG. So just for transferring the PRG over to the SD card and running it on the real Commodore 64. And then the emulator tool chain thing that we were just talking about is here. I can just hit F11 and it'll automatically go through that whole chain. And I will demonstrate that now. We've got a simple program, print one, two, three, and notice there's no line number there. That automatically tokenizes it, puts it in a PRG file, packs that PRG file in a D64 file, and loads that D64 file up in Vice, uh, Commodore 64 emulator, and runs the basic program. You can see here, run, and it spat out one, two, three. And if I do a program listing, you can see that it added a line number to it, blah, blah, blah. So that is making my debugging world a heck of a lot easier, and I really like that. So the last thing I wanted to talk about here on this is that the directives can very easily be added by placing your cursor wherever you want it, and if I want to renumber, I just renumber. If I want to crunch, which means to sort of take out all the spaces and white space that's not necessary uh, when it tokenizes. I can just crunch and change the switch to on or off. And there's a lot of fancy stuff, um, inline assembly and variable names and labels and all that sort of stuff. So everything in that curly brackets is C64 list directives. 
and I can put those in the program wherever I want. And then I also have all of the keywords that are used in C64 Basic in here. So I can just, you know, if I don't want to have to remember how to type in a uh, defining of a function, I can just psh, define a function like so. <laughs> this code would not work well at the moment. But yeah, you guys get the idea. And this is uh, editable in here. Put my lines in however I want and it'll take out all the white space and happily run. Okay, so that's the toy that uh, I spent some time earlier in the week throwing together just as a personal toy. If you guys have any questions about this or would like to see more of this kind of thing, let me know. Um, I think the Commodore 64 stuff is really fun. I'm not sure how many of you guys like that sort of stuff. So let us know in the comments. And if you guys are interested in C64 stuff and SID stuff, then I will definitely try to get video of progress as it occurs. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.